So we're looking at the Instana UI now, and it has a few different perspectives to it. So you can look at applications that you're monitoring. You can look at infrastructure, which we'll look at when it comes time to look at some of the Omegamon data. You can also have um, website and end user monitoring. But we're going to focus here on applications. And what you see here is a list of all of the applications that I'm monitoring in my environment with Instana. And we're going to focus on this Z hybrid application, which we can see that Instana has told us um, it's not healthy. We have a, an open issue. Calls are slower than unusual. So we're going to click on that. <clears throat> and what we can see here on this overview screen inside of Instana for my application is uh, things like um, how many calls per second my application is processing, how many of those calls are ending in an error, uh, what the overall latency is of my application. And we can see that in the beginning of this time period we're looking at the application was um, very quick to respond to end user requests and then we had um, an event occur um, where latency started to get much higher and Instana opened up that um, issue we saw earlier that calls were slower than normal. Um, let's go take a look at all of the services. And in this third column, you can see the technology type that my application services are running on. And um, as the name implies for this application, we have a mix of things. Um, so we have four Kix regions running on ZOS. We have a DB2 running on ZOS and ZOS Connect. And then we also have um, things like Nginx, Tomcat, MySQL, and those are all running off-platform, um, and Instana is able to, to monitor all of these, and it's also able to show me the dependencies between my services. So for this application, um, I know my end users are coming in to this Nginx server. This is where they're pointing their, their browsers at, and Nginx in turn is calling our web application running on Tomcat. And our web application, depending on the end user request, is making uh, calls to a variety of, of back-end back -end services. So again, we can see we have those four Kix regions we were looking at on the previous page. Um, we also will highlight um, the uh, DB2 reads that are being done by our transaction. So we can go inspect what's happening here. And if we take a look at um, some of these slow DB2 calls, we can get a, um, a call stack for our transaction here. So let me switch to an environment now where we have the Omegamon data provider running. And I'm going to look for a couple of, of transactions here that we can take a look at. We have a, another Kix region in this environment. And if I look at the underlying calls, just as we did in the other application, and if we select our first Kix transaction here, structure. So we can take a click on that link. And what you will see is a similar dashboard to what we looked at for, for like the JVM. Um, underneath Tomcat, for example, and we are um, curating a set of metrics from Omegamon to give you high-level indicators about the overall health of this Kix region. So things like how much CPU is it using, um, IO rates, paging rates, is this Kix region short on storage, uh, what's the transaction rate for the entire region over time. But let's go look at this infrastructure view inside of Instana. And what we see here is a kind of a series of, of boxes with little towers in them. We can zoom into these. And this shows, so the, the boxes here are availability zones. Uh, let's look at what we have for ZOS. So if I filter by ZOS now, I can see that we have two different six plexes that we are feeding data to this Instana instance from Omegamon. So what we do by default is we create availability zones that represent the sysplex, and then we have um, each of these towers represents a, a ZOS instance. 
and we can look at the, the dashboard for, for ZOS and we can see things like CPU utilization by processor type, um, MSU capacity, uh, also look at um, the top jobs by um, storage utilization on, on the system. And let's take a, a quick look at the DB2. We've looked at kind of what we have for ZOS and CICS, and we can look at DB2 as well. Uh, so in this case, we had some lock conflicts earlier in the day. Um, so that might be important if you're trying to troubleshoot a application slowdown. And you'll see things like current thread count, current transactions for this DB2.